Hello and welcome to I Talk to Ghosts. I'm your spooky host, Jennifer, and I hope you've had an amazing October so far. I need to say this. I have had such a fantastic and welcoming response to these episodes that I cannot thank you enough. Also, I had the amazing opportunity to share a personal ghost story on Jim Harold's Campfire podcast this month. So if you found me from there, thank you for being here. And if you haven't ever checked out the Campfire podcast, please do. It is so good. It is one of my favorites to find a variety of creepy, spooky stories. You will not be disappointed, so find Jim Harold's Campfire podcast. So, dear listener, whether you just joined me here in October or have been listening from the beginning, I can't express how wonderful it has been to share stories, thoughts, and even emotions with you. I think there's a real connection here through ghosts. (laughs) Who knew? (laughs) But simply put, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of this podcast. Make sure to join me next week in November where I pick up our regular format of adding personal ghost stories and tales of my life as a spirit medium. Speaking of which, If you're one of those people who like to skip over the promo in the middle of the episode, you may be missing out. And here's why. I plan on adding a new segment in which I offer a free spirit reading and will share portions of that on upcoming episodes of I Talk to Ghosts. So if you have a departed loved one that you would like to connect with and you would also love to be a part of the podcast, check out that commercial in the middle of the episode to find out the details. As I said, I'm your haunted host, Jennifer, and I am wishing you a very happy, happy Halloween. If you are like me and enjoy a good ghost story, you have wandered into the right podcast. I'm wrapping up October with continued spooky curated ghost stories and I have to say I think I've left the best for last. I hope you brought some extra candles and some mugwort because the stories are extra creepy tonight. So thank you for joining me. I don't want to be alone. <laughs> This happened to me a while back in high school, when I spent the night at my friend's apartment. After eating dinner, we decided to watch a movie on the TV in the bedroom. It was me, my friend, her sister, and the youngest girl, all huddled in one room watching a movie. All of the sudden, the TV turned off. The older of the two sisters let out a sigh, and with a slightly amused smile, she turned the TV back on. It happened again, and this time, she rolled her eyes and said loudly, Cassie, stop! We're trying to watch this. I was confused and sat there thinking, who the heck is Cassie? Nothing was said of it, though, so I brushed the whole thing off since we were again trying to continue the movie. Fast forward to the middle of the night. Everyone is asleep, including me. I don't remember why I woke up, but I did. And that's when I noticed I was holding a teddy bear. I don't sleep with stuffed animals, nor did I bring this bear with me. I held it up and recognized it. I remember this particular bear had been situated on this special weird little bed that one of the kids had set up in the dining room. The bed also housed a large porcelain doll that was holding another smaller identical looking doll. But back to the bear. 
I thought someone must be playing a sleepover prank, so I went and I put the bear back. As I'm walking away, wind-up music starts playing from one of the dolls, and I just froze. To get that music to play, you have to crank the doll by hand, and it clicks loudly when you do, and everyone was asleep. I'm not a brave person when it comes to creepy, so I rushed back into the bedroom, slinked into bed, and closed my eyes to go to sleep. The next morning, the older sister, sleeping across the room from me, was holding the teddy bear when she sat up. She looks at it with that small smile again, and then she does what I did. She put it back by the larger, creepy porcelain doll. I hate dolls. They freak me out. Still, I'm wondering what the story is with this doll, its teeny music companion that looks just like it, and the bear. I ask. Everyone looked at me like, you don't know? Of course I don't. I guess they figured my friend would have told me, but she hadn't. Then, they calmly begin to tell me the story of Cassie. It all started a few summers ago, they said. We were on the back porch, and the younger kids were playing in the yard. Everything was fine, and still it started pouring rain. It rolled in so quick. It totally caught us off guard. After we all ran inside and closed the door, Lee, the youngest, was looking outside to watch the rain. In the dim light, she said she saw a girl, soaking wet, pale, staring at our house. She opened the door and told her she could come in if she wanted, though the rest of us couldn't see her. Lee said after that, she disappeared, and that's when things started happening in the house. They went on to tell me about their individual experiences, hearing little laughs, their feet being tickled at night, humming sounds. They decided to buy the small bed, tell her it was hers. Then they got the doll that they said resembled her followed by the teeny wind-up music doll and the bear. They said they somehow knew she wanted it. After they got the bear, it began being moved to different beds at night. In the morning, the bear would just be in someone's bed, tucked in their arms, and they would just put it back. Cassie apparently loved to do this. And she loved to play the small doll's little tune. She would tickle feet, mess with TV screens, and things like that. I know this sounds weird. Trust me, I still think it was weird. But that whole house was weird. I never slept over there again and eventually stopped visiting altogether. I do know, though that you would sometimes be watching TV or playing a game and you would hear a little girl laugh or suddenly feel a surge of joy overwhelm you to the point of random giggles. You'd feel tickling on your feet and that bear and the doll. It was all certainly interesting. This is a story from my childhood that involves family members as well. 
My parents and older brother left the house that day to pick up some lamps they had ordered. My two older sisters were left in charge of me and the rest of my siblings. The weather was bad and getting progressively worse, so we decided to go to the basement in case of a tornado. We camped out under a table for protection, but my little brother wouldn't get under the table and chose to mess around and play with anything he could find to entertain himself. He was young and always had a lot of energy. My older sisters, Debbie and Cheryl, were watching the storm out the back door. All of the sudden, Cheryl shut the door and locked it. And Debbie said, that won't stop it if it wanted in. They scrambled and tried to get under the table, but there wasn't enough room for more people. I thought it was a tornado. I held my baby sister close as she sat on my lap. Then, all of the sudden, it sounded like the furniture was being tossed around the room. It was like our house was being destroyed on the floor above us. Part of me worried for my safety, and part of me was freaking out because I didn't want us to get blamed for something while we were all in the basement. Some time had passed, and we heard walking around upstairs. My brother David went upstairs and said Dad and Mom and Gary were home. I was afraid of what I'd see. But everything was fine. I was so relieved. I let out the longest breath. But then, that's when Debbie and Cheryl told our parents what happened. Apparently, when they were looking out the door, they saw someone with long, dark hair walking in the storm. Concerned for her safety, one of them yelled, hey, which I hadn't heard. The person turned towards them and didn't have a face and started walking towards them. That's when Cheryl shut the door and locked it, and Debbie said that wouldn't stop it if it wanted in. Dad didn't believe them, but what got me was how it sounded like the house was being torn up, but nothing was wrong with it. I saw how scared they were, and I know that this is all true. Hello, dear listener. I am so excited to share a new segment of the podcast with you, and you can be a part of it. Would you like to receive a free spirit reading with me? Enter for your chance at italktoghosts.com slash guest. Each week, I'll randomly select a name from the list to be a guest on the show. Together, we will talk to the spirits who wish to communicate with you, and our session will be featured on a future episode of I Talk to Ghosts. The spirits are waiting. Enter now at italktoghosts.com slash guest. I moved into my current place in early August. My apartment is the third floor in a brownstone, a beautiful old building with hardwood floors and wall moldings and quaint remodeled light fixtures, the whole bit. My roommate had already lived in the apartment for three years. He told me that the landlady often let herself in to check on things without knocking. So when I felt someone watching me, I figured it was her. Every time I turned around though, there was nobody there. I often thought I saw the edge of a skirt or a black boot heel disappearing around the corner, but I could never turn around fast enough. Finally, after a week or so, I mentioned it to my roommate. He replied that he had long suspected the place was haunted. A 
other sensations contributed to that impression. For example, the cold spots in the kitchen. The entity seemed to concentrate on the kitchen and the back rooms where I lived. The kitchen doorway in particular One hot summer day, I was mopping the kitchen floor and just sweating when I suddenly felt cold to the bone. The hackles on my neck stood up and I knew someone was there with me. Other times, one of us would be cooking and we could feel someone standing right behind us. When you turned around, of course, there was nothing. Strange things continued to happen, nothing threatening, but nothing easily explained either. A glass of water I had placed on the end table spilled on me in the middle of the night from eight feet away. My shoes were often paired up neatly in the front of the closet in the morning. One day, I came up the stairs to the apartment and I could hear voices in the kitchen, Then, when I fit my key into the lock, they passed by the front door and into the living room and back into my roommate's half of the apartment. Once in the apartment, I could see there was nobody there. Okay, so big deal, you say. And you'd be right. I couldn't prove there were entities in the apartment. Nothing ever manifested to me visually, but... I just knew somehow. I knew there were two, both female, one about 30 years old and one younger, maybe 10 or 12 years old, probably mother and daughter. I just knew. I could feel it. Then my suspicions were confirmed on two separate occasions. First, the doors. If something in the apartment were being rearranged or a great deal of noise was being made, the doors in the back of the apartment would slam shut, open about six inches, slam again, open, slam, open, slam, faster and faster like a tantrum. After about a month of this, I became fairly used to the various carryings on, and I would just yell, STOP! And the slamming would stop like this. Slam! Creak! And the door would slowly reopen about halfway. My friend Aaron didn't believe any of this. So once, after a few beers in the living room, I called towards the back of the apartment. Aaron doesn't believe in you. If you're here, slam the back bedroom door. That door was blocked open with a Doc Martin boot, which promptly rolled into the hall. That trick was followed by a symphony of slamming from the back. Closet doors as well which convinced Aaron not only of the ghost's existence, but also of the desirability of leaving for the nearest pub at top speed. The other thing that confirmed their presence was my kitten. I brought him home and let him out of his cat carrier, and he ran under the tub. When he finally consented to coming out, He wouldn't go into the kitchen and would meow at something in the kitchen doorway, occasionally growling and fluffing up his tail as if threatened. (laughs) I also tried to get behind him on these occasions. If I could look between his ears, I might be able to see something or someone, but I could never move fast enough. In the end, I finally moved out. My dad and brother came to help me cart all my stuff to my new place. When we were finished loading the van, I sent my brother up with the keys to lock the front door. He came back down and said, The door 
was already locked. And here's one more story for you tonight. Enjoy. My friend and her brothers were staying the weekend at my house. Our brothers played competitive hockey together and had a game early the next morning. Being teenage girls, we liked to sleep in late. My parents decided to leave us to sleep while they went to the game early the next morning. They told us the plan the night before. I was sound asleep when my friend woke me up. She shook my shoulder and whispered, Jess, Jess, wake up. There's someone in the house. Me being the lazy and sound sleeper that I am, just told her that it was probably my parents and fell back asleep. She finally shoved me to totally wake me up. Jess, listen. I sat there, still groggy from asleep, and listened. Bam, bam, bam. Someone was definitely stomping up the stairs and hitting the walls as they came up. I wondered who it was when all of a sudden it stopped. Whatever it was turned around a few times in the hall as if deciding on where to go. Who is it? My friend whispered. I hadn't a clue and just shook my head scared to death. Then, as if whatever it was decided on what it was going to do, it took a long jump almost all the way down the hall, landing almost directly in front of my closed door. My friend jumped from her trundle bed to my day bed, landing on me. Quickly she joined me, shaking under the covers. Whatever it was, was a lot bigger than a person. We heard heavy breathing outside the door. I hoped that if it was a person, which by then I knew it wasn't, I could scare it off with some music maybe. I grabbed my remote control to my stereo. The second I grabbed the remote, the door handle shook as if it was locked and someone angrily wanted in. I accidentally dropped the remote and frantically tried to grab it. Just as I did, the door flung open, hitting the wall and leaving a ring where the door handle hit it. I didn't move from my position under the covers, huddled up with my friend. She was shaking and crying quietly. There was nothing there in the room. There was no form that we could see. But whatever it was stormed into the room, knocking some papers off the dresser, opening some drawers of markers and pictures, dumping them on the floor, and searched the unmade trundle bed where my friend had been. Then, it stormed out the door and disappeared. No more sounds or noises. The room was a mess, but still we didn't move. I clicked on the music about five minutes after it left, still under the blankets, now crying myself. I uncovered my head and glanced nervously around the room. It was gone. No trace of it. We stayed under the covers for a half hour, scared out of our wits. It didn't come back. I finally got out of bed and looked around the room. I quickly glanced down the hall with the lights on, of course. No footprints or holes in the walls. Some very dark pencil marks ran down the hall, like some child had been running down the hall with a pencil, marking it along the way. But they were much too high for a little child, and much too crooked for them to be done purposefully. I left the room the way it was. We got dressed and sat talking about it for a long time. Then my parents got home. I told them everything, both of us giving them exact stories. They just laughed and we got the blame for the mess and the pencil marks. My friend and I will be the only ones that know and totally believe that this happened. 
she doesn't like to talk about it. I hope you've enjoyed these ghost stories that I've shared with you this evening as we creep ever closer to October 31st. Have a happy, happy Halloween and thank you for being my guest. And I hope you stay all year long for more spooky and mystical stories. This is only the beginning. I have so many plans and ideas for the months ahead and I can't wait to share them with you. Until then, keep the spooky going and have an amazing Halloween. And the ghosts and I will see you soon. Have a lovely evening and good night.